You were around, right, when Marcy comes in? Is Were you part of that when she does the turnover? Yeah, that's, that's, that's when, that's when uh, it kind of ended. So. I don't know how much people know about this Marcy person, but she came in and sort of changed the way Howard thought. Were you aware that this was what he was coming with? It, 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 was, it was game over. Hello and welcome to another edition of Here's the Pitch, sponsored by Masses Restaurants in St. Louis, five locations, stlmasses.com. We've got a big update on Beetlejuice. I talked to his manager. I want to tell you about that in a second, but I also want to tell you about my sponsor, stlmasses.com. So in 2021, going to continue these interviews. I'm looking for all kinds of different guests of people that have been on the show, who are part of the show, and Beetlejuice is one of them. So uh, I'm going to tell you about that in a second. This is an, another clip show, though. This is the Marcy Turk Effect. So these are people that work there during the era, before and after, and they talk about what it was like before, what it was like after, and a lot of people obviously had uh, did not last. Uh, some were hired after and could tell you a little bit about what it was like during that. Uh, Brent Hatley will be part of this show, Tim Sabian, some of the people you've seen in the long-form interviews, uh, but I take down those long-form interviews into this bite-sized thing so you can see all of their uh, people talking about that, and it seems like people enjoyed it when uh, I did this last time. Uh, Beetlejuice. So again, I am looking for anybody uh, associated with the show. I've contacted many, many people, and hopefully we'll get a few more here uh, as we move into 2021, but I did talk to Beetlejuice's manager. He will be part of the show one day, uh, hopefully soon, but during COVID, he's been living with his mom in Georgia. He's not traveling. He's not doing any appearances. He's, he's not really doing anything. Uh, he's doing well, according to his manager, so I appreciate uh, that and hope that everyone hopes uh, that he's doing well. But uh, with he has diabetes, so he's having some troubles traveling. So hopefully 2021 things will open up and we'll see Beetlejuice at our local bars and right here on Here's the Pitch. So hopefully you enjoyed uh, that update on Beetlejuice. I just got off the phone uh, with his manager, and again, he'll be hopefully part of the show with his manager during uh, the next uh, series of these interviews. But uh, good luck to Beetlejuice. But all that out of the way, I want to make sure you subscribe, pass these videos along. It looks like the, the last one, again, was a, was a big hit with everybody. So make sure that uh, you're subscribing and liking and commenting and tell me who you'd like to see on the show next, uh, next year as I keep doing these on ST Weekly. ST Weekly. It used to be Sports Talk Weekly, now Stern Talk Weekly. I'm trying to do a podcast once a week. And again, you can find these in podcast form as well if you just search Here's the Pitch. So with that all out of the way, let's talk about the Marcy Turk era. Again, she comes in around 2013. Howard shakes up the staff, and um, some people like it, some people don't. I guess most people didn't, but uh, Tim Sabian was the first guy that uh, I got to really talk about this with, and Doug Goodstein. So we'll hear about the, the Marcy Turk effect right now on Here's the Pitch. They, they were going through some major changes, too, from what I remember, because Howard had his... Uh, his address around 2013 to the whole staff and we need to change things. And then Marcy comes in. Did, did those guys tell you, wow, this is really different here. I mean, this is, things are different or did they, did they, how did that, how did it seem? How did the atmosphere seem to you? Well, cause I was there before and they're there. It was, it was two totally different things. Now it's much more with, uh, with everybody that came in now, it's much more structured and much more, there's a very definite solid, structure to it which with an organization that big you kind of have to do that you can't let things get out of control so there's a definite solid structure to things and with that comes a little bit more red tape of getting your stuff on the air but that's i, I understand like you've got to uh the amount of stuff that's getting pitched to howard it's got to be cut down to a manageable amount that he could that he actually gets to look at so um it's just it's again it's more structured last time it was like a it was a free-for-all and there's you know, that came through on the air too. Like there's, there's things to be said for a free for all, but I understand in an organization that large, it, it has to be brought under control and it really was under control. And they do have good systems in place there. And, uh, they, they, they do run a tight ship and they do run a, a good organization. Um, how, you know, amidst all the criticism that they get, like it's, it's, it's no easy task. You're the principal basically at a kindergarten because all of us were very immature. you thinking yeah, Sal, Richard, me, JD, Shuley, I mean, that group alone, then then you start throwing in Jason and Will and Gary, like, I mean, could could you have a more a group of more immature guys? Like, Gary is like the most mature one of all of us, <laughs> and uh, controlling us 
which we needed to be controlled at times, is not easy. So I, I would not want that job, but they have done a good job of putting a, a structure in there and running a tight ship. I don't know how much people know about this Marcy person, but she came in and sort of changed the way Howard thought. Did it have anything to do with Howard TV? Or did that kind of, did that, that stuff stay? I don't know. Us? I mean, she, she kind of came around like, you know, that kind of tail end. Um, so we didn't have a uh, like a terrible amount of dealings with her. We were kind of our own operation. Um, so maybe that was why things didn't work out, you know, because we were kind of independent and our own operation and we worked for a separate company. Um, so that separate company had a lot of say in things, at least as far as like, you know, what we could do and, you know, how we were treated. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I can't, you know, I can't say for sure. What? So yeah. you were around, right? When Marcy comes in, is were you part of that when she does the turnover? Yeah, I that's, that's, that's when, that's when uh, it kind of ended. So, um, Marcy came in and, uh, you know, she kind of took over the show and then, um, how it didn't resign and, uh, that was it. It was over, you know? And, you know, to me, uh, I, I was just like, all right, it's over. You know, like I worked there for 16 years and I was like, you know what? This was a great experience. I work in television man. I had jobs for, that was supposed to go three years and they went a month, you know? So shit ends, you know, it's going to happen. So I wasn't really pissed off. I was just kind of like, the only thing I was kind of mad at is that I found out like everybody else on the air. That was the weird thing. It was like, we, we didn't know what was going to happen. We're like, Doug, what's happening? What's He's like, I don't know. We don't know. Blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, Howard's like, yeah, um, we're not going to do the Howard TV anymore. It's good, done. And, and we're like, we all turned around and looked at Doug like, what? And he goes, I don't, this is the first time I'm hearing about it. And it's true that we all found out together. That's my only bad you know, thing about the show is that that's how I found out. It would have been nice to know beforehand because we knew something was happening, but we didn't know if he was going to stream and, and keep it on the stream or we didn't know what the hell was going to happen. So it turns out we found out and that was it. So I was like, all right, you know, we, that night we got a call or an email, you know, that's it. We got a month left of production and then it's over. And we did all last month, and which was kind of great too because uh, Metallica had to come in and we went to the Apollo show and we're like fifth row and we're watching the Metallica like right in front of our faces. And then they came in uh, two days later. They came, it was a Friday night show. They came in on Monday or maybe a Saturday night show, whatever, whatever night it was. And they came in on Monday and that was kind of cool too, because I was talking to uh, the management. I knew some of the guys from the management of Metallica from Cube Prime. And when they came in, uh, Gary walks in with a piece of paper and he's like, here you go, Brian. And uh, the guys from the management from Q Prime went to Metallica and they all had them sign the set list and gave me the set list. Cool. So that was like a great going away present. I was like, holy shit, a fucking Metallica signed set list from the Apollo, a show that, you know, is a once in a lifetime show. So that was that was pretty cool. That was a good way to go out. And it's weird. I know, you know, as Gary, that they've evolved thoughts on just kind of how how it's going because i don't think they they don't really bring in comedians anymore right you haven't been in in a long time and has it been no, they do like a more like they're only on three days a week and they you know they got a-listers coming in now they never used to get lady gaga and madonna and bradley cooper and stuff like that they had dirtbags like us so <laughs> the show's changed it's fine i still do the wrap-up show like twice a year we're all friends i still talk to all those guys i see because i work at sirius i work on the hard rock channel obviously's boneyard I do a show over there. So I'm always up there doing different shows. So it's all good. Hey, man, the, the way I look at Howard is like he discovers you, he launches you, and then you're on your own. He gives you that moment. And, hey, make it work. Well, I give you all this exposure, and then I'm going to move on from you, and I'm going to bring other people in. That's the way I always looked at it. So I've never had any regrets or be mad at him that I don't go on the show anymore. I'm like, the guy gave me a huge break. I'll always be grateful. Yeah, and I, like I said, I named those guys off, Craig Gass and Greg Fitzsimmons. I didn't really know those guys at that point. Of course, you guys have all done different things since, but you're right. I mean, it, <laughs> you go on there twice and people are going to know who you are. So, uh, yeah, that was awesome. So, again, the show is different now. I get, are you, you're not really on there as much, right? I mean, he doesn't really even have comedians call in or sit in or any of that. No, it's the craziest thing. I would love, I would always still relish the opportunity to go in there and volley with them on a regular basis again. Um, but like I said, I don't know. I mean, it just seems like the show is evolved into something completely different. Even when we used to go in there creatively, we had, it was just, it was a, I, look, 
it was a different vibe back then. I don't know what it's like now. It'd be unfair for me to say that. I just know that I'm called upon every once in a while to do something. Do you do this or do that? Boy, and Howard's always been gracious. So, but yeah, um, it's changed. Well, you did stuff with Tan Mom, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Tan mom. Oh, dang, tan mom. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did a call, phone call with her. Let a lot of people heard. They like that. Tan mom. I don't like tan mom. I don't get it, but um, that's fine. You're a fan of mine. <laughs> I like tan moms. I call it tan mom. It was business um, on why the show didn't come back, right? And contracts, they come and they go, and sometimes they're not always done. But on the other side, on the personal side, yes, I'd been there for 24 years. It's a long time. Um, it's probably, I felt in my mind, I was not in a position that, you know, you should find this out on the air and that's really how we're going to go out. But there was still always the chance the show was going, the video portion of the show was still going to stick around in some version. So it wasn't really like, hey, you know, you're done, done. Um, until they finally were like, yeah, I guess, you know, no deals are being made, you know? Um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was really odd to hear it. It was really sad. Um, it was sad for everybody that worked on the Howard TV team. Um, because they, you know, again, everybody really cared about this product and cared about working on the show. And I think everybody just got deflated hearing that's the way the show was going to go out and not getting, you know, even a personal heads up an hour before, 15 minutes before anything, you know, um, that, you know, you're hearing this news on the radio and, you know, it, it does hurt that way. It does sting. Did you have a chance ever to talk to Howard about it? No, we had, we had very like limited, um, you know, I was there until the end of that year. Some, you know, some people didn't last as long because, you know, once the show was, was deemed that it wasn't coming back, um, you know, the company had like a layoff plan in place, you know, where, the, you know, certain employees we were going to purge as we were going closer to the end of the contract date where, you know, obviously we weren't going to be producing new content. Um, so I was there, you know, I think myself, Doug, and one other person were there to the very bitter end. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, there was a few... You know, a few little interactions, but nothing really. Nothing I mean, to do, speak of. Do you, like, do you go, what the fuck? <laughs> Dude, I can't, you know, like, and this is this is how I've always looked at it. I can't control how somebody else reacts to things. You know what I mean? Like, and I can't put my expectations on somebody else because they're not me and everybody acts the way they're going to act and I, they're never going to change just for me, so... Um, I took it as this is the way he is and this is the way he acts and, and that's what it is. Okay, and then we move into the 2013 and we've seen on YouTube there's a summit meeting. What was that like as he's sort of changing and as Gary would always say evolving quote, what was the summit meeting like for you when you see Howard on that stage saying, you know, I, I want A-listers. Were you aware that this was what he was coming with? It, it, it was it was game over. <laughs> I just, I, it just, it was game over for me. I, I just... I, I, we were on a, an attack that was so powerful and so successful. Um, I just, um, I, I just, I, I, you know, if there was no, when, when you do a, a change like that, you got to show value add, you got to show to the audience why you're doing what you're doing. Um, and um, it, it's it, not that it was wrong what he did. Uh, it was in the way that it happened, what was, that was wrong. So, um, but it is what it is. You, it's his bat, his ball, his game. So he can do whatever he w he'd like to do. So God bless him. Yeah, and that's you said it was the beginning of the end. The end happened so weirdly. I know you've told this story before, but your father passes away, right? And you, you've decided this is kind of be my time where I want to uh, maybe take a leave of absence. Tell me that story because it does it does really – when I heard this, I'm like, man, that's a terrible way to end it uh, for a guy who's been with him so long. Uh, yeah, it was it was, uh, it was was personal. And, it, and I said, okay, whatever, and, and – I just let it go, but uh, it was a moment. It, it, it was a lot of things. My both my parents were dying at the same time. Um, you know that was very hard. I never never even knew how to even deal with that, and uh, just uh, it was it was tough. Um, but 
you know, because I, I literally, I, I dedicated my life to Howard. I moved from uh, Philadelphia to New York on my own dime. Um, I, I, you know, I believed in him and what we were doing so deeply. And it was such a part of my life. And when that happened, it was, um, it was, it was, it was tough, but life goes on. You pick up and uh, you, you move on. Yeah. So you did, you did move on, but what, how, how long does it take to get over not being there? Cause at this point, essentially he just says you wanted to take a leave of absence and he goes, I'm just going to let you go. Which did he ever explain what, what that was about? But then secondly, uh, I, I, yeah. it's, it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter. It just, it's, it doesn't deserve the discussion, but um, the thing is you just, you pick up, you move on. It's not how many times you get knocked down. It's how many times you get up. And uh, it, it literally like when the Howard TV crew was cut loose you know, Doug called me up and said, Hey, I just got fired. You know, I'm like, I said, dude, it's the best thing that'll ever happen to you. And he goes, why? What? What do you mean? I said, it'll take you two months to recoup, to get your soul back, your heart back, your, you know, your, your psyche back, your sleep patterns back and all that kind of stuff, because you, you live it every single day. You're, you're brainwashed. You're living in a bubble. And when you get out of it and you see that there's life outside of it, you go, Oh my God. You know, and it really is like a rebirth. And uh, so, so, you know, it's, it's what you go through, you know, and life has its ups and downs. And that was one of the greatest ups of, of, of my career. And, and I'll, I'll be forever grateful, but uh, you know, you, you move on, you, you re, rebuild yourself and, and that's, it takes time. So it's, it's all good. That's what I was going to say too. Cause it, it, there was a point there where I was sort of in and out and then there's a Mehmet who shows up and a no wiki and the Chris Wilde, all these people that I'd never heard of. And I'm like, what are they, where are they coming from? And why, why is he bringing them all in? What did you think of all these, this, this new, or was it, I need younger, new talent. I've got Will, I got Jason. They've been with me for 20 years, but I want some newer, fresher voices. Well, I don't think it was that. I think it was, you know, Mehmet is an interesting guy to begin with. So like he's interesting to talk to off the air. Um, but on the air, he's even more interesting to talk to. Um, and I like the fact that he will let his like uh, neuroses like come through the mic. Now, Wiki is just a talented performer, kind of an interesting guy. Like he can build guitars and, and uh, set models, and like he's just he's just an interesting, very very talented guy. And uh, Chris Wilding's one of those other other people like me that's just completely insane. So they kind of pick the people out in the office that are that ha- that are somewhat on some level interesting or quirky or insane and that's what Howard can really break down there's a there's a ton of people that work there that are perfectly normal middle of the road people but that's not the ones that you hear on the air you hear the insane people on the air because that's what's interesting like you don't want to hear the guy that's sitting next to you in the cubicle at Barclays or at uh, you know the guy that's working with you at Home Depot that's not what you're looking to hear you're looking to hear people that are really out of their minds and I think that's what they look for yeah and you I mean early on when you're talking about getting you know that kid thing I mean you could see him just you know well he's a kid yeah. and he's an intern I don't need him right I mean it's yeah I mean look at the end of the day Howard doesn't need anybody except himself, really, right? The show still, you know, it's his name, it's his show. Uh, if everybody else disappeared, he'd still be doing a show and be all by himself and just be fine. Um, but I think we did all bring something to that show. I don't think uh, that we didn't have anything to do with its success. I think he would have been successful no matter what, but I do think that there were certain things that people loved about us being on the show that I think, you know, we brought some value to that. Would you have been a lifer there if you could have? Would you have just stayed as, as long as the the party was oh, going? Yeah. What are you kidding me? I would. I would cool. I'd still be there if I if I had to, man. That would have been the, the deal to to still work there. But you know, like I said, man, TV shows end, and, and you just gotta move on and do the you know do the next do, do your next phase, you know. And that's what I did. I freelanced around for a while, and um, you know, I was at the Yankees, I was at the Mets, I was at uh, Boomer Show, I was doing uh, CNN. And this whole COVID thing knocked everything out of whack, and now there's no work. And like I said, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be working, but I got ten more games as of right now, and then they're gonna the playoffs are gonna go to a bubble too, and and then there's gonna be I'm gonna be out of that. So there's uh, there's nothing going on for me, uh, uh, you know, after this month. Well, we'll drink. Let's just drink, dude. I've been drinking for six months. So have I. Like when you know when we first when I first got there it was like you dealt with Gary then all of a sudden as a whole you know it was Gary then Howard you know then all of a sudden it's all these people and you know you don't know if Howard's saying anything because Howard's always been good to me 
So, you know, I, I might have fucking got a little loud at the end and did something I shouldn't have, but I was trying to get his attention. I wasn't going to hurt him. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, you threatened him, right? <laughs> well, yeah, I threatened to kill him. I had the... Uh, I had the NYPD blue in my house and suits with my my cops. They lit up the street and they just wanted to talk to me. They said the FBI is involved. This is bad, you know. And I'm like, dude, if I wanted him dead, he'd be dead. And they're like, you can't say that. And I'm like, look, I'm just telling you. And I said it again. And they're like, you can't say that, you know. But it wasn't. It was more like. People will turn on you in a second, and I'm not used to that. I have friends that will kill for me, and I will for them. So I didn't know how to deal with people, you know, in a different way of being, oh, okay, you know what I mean? Since you told me that, I won't. When did you, I don't remember this happening. I did some research, and I saw that you threatened to kill him, but I don't remember it happening. How did this happen? When did this happen, and what was the circumstances? Uh, well, okay, this is the whole thing, you know what I mean? Basically, they called and Jared said that I attacked four security guards outside. This is when I'm heavily on Xanax, six milligrams a day, okay? Really fucking now I'm just like, you know, it takes your emotions low or high. If you get angry, you get more angry than you'll ever be. It's a horrible drug. If you're calm, it makes you really calm. And then he goes, I go, call me, you know, he goes, I'll call you the next day. He calls me the next day and he goes, I go, I never attacked no security guards. I liked them. We get along. I get along with everybody. And he's like, I never said that, Jared said. And my friend's sitting there that I do a podcast with. And I'm like, okay. I go, well, find out what's going on. And I'd like to talk to some. Next day, calls back. And he said, uh, but I said, I'm going to kill. I'm going to kill him and his wife. I'm going to cut them up and, you know, and I'm playing it. And I've even talked to the detective that was not, you know, that was his bodyguard, not Ronnie. It was a detective that would be you have it. And he, he, we talked on the phone once because he hit me up. He goes, Bob, I know you're in that. And I said, let me explain. I said, talk to me. And I talked to him and I said, I'm going to do exactly what I did with a knife, but I'm going to say it's an ice cream cake. And I did it. Like I was going to cut up an ice cream cake. And he goes, you're very good at this. I go, yes, I am. I go, yeah, I can have you believe what the fuck. That's what radio is. You know what I mean? That's what radio is. You think I couldn't say those words? You think, uh, you know, are you kidding me? As we did these words that I couldn't say, you know, hedonism. I couldn't say that. I couldn't say any of these words. But it's, 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 it's what is good for the radio at that point. You know what I mean? And then you get away. You try to get away from it and move on to something else. That's what I always try to do. So an interesting look back at uh, when Marcy Turk took over and the changes that were made. And um, it's a different show for sure. Uh, some people love it still. Some people don't. Um, but I'm here just to talk to the people that used to work there and get their thoughts. I'm not here to stir anything up, of course. But hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, again, subscribe, uh, like these videos, share them, let people see them, let people know what's going on over here at ST Weekly, as we'll be doing this a lot in 2021. And uh, send me uh, some uh, people you'd like to see here, as, uh, as I've pretty much contacted as many people as I can think of. But there's always room for more. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.